Chief Executive John Lee calls for more local spending. Passengers can use some credit cards to pay for MTR fares. U.S. Supreme Court makes decision on Donald Trump. Hello and welcome to TVB News. With the Christmas long weekend beginning today, Chief Executive John Lee visited the Temple Street Night Market and the West Kowloon Christmas Market to enjoy the delicacies as well as to find out more about the street vendors' business conditions. He also urged residents to spend more money in Hong Kong. Timothy Lee has our top story. Flanked by several senior officials, Chief Executive John Lee found some warmth in food stalls selling steaming hot snacks at the Temple Street Night Market. Accompanying the CE were Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism Kevin Young, Hong Kong Tourism Board Chairman Pang Yu Kai, and representatives of Temple Street. <laughs> Lee's first stop was at a stall selling airplane olives, a traditional Hong Kong snack. Lee said the snacks brings back memories from his youth. Crowds on Temple Street took the opportunity to greet Lee. The CE tried some Nepali snacks before tasting a hot Turkish coffee. You need to milk. Okay. Milk, sugar. Yeah. No, no sugar. No sugar. Uh, try to lose some, lose some weight. The CE was also offered some Turkish shawarma. No, well, I mean, I, I, I will still have a long no, way okay, to go. Okay. Otherwise, my stomach will be, won't have any space. Before leaving Temple Street, Lee had some sesame rolls, which he said he ate when he was a child, and bought a pack of the snacks before departing. The sesame roll stall shopkeeper said Lee asked how her business was, adding it has improved. <laughs> CE then visited the West Kowloon Christmas Market, where he learned more about locally made chili oil and enjoyed some wine. Lee noted the atmosphere at the market feels like the Christmas parties he attended in the past. The CE noted the government wants the night markets to create a festive Christmas spirit and encourage local consumption. Meanwhile, Financial Secretary Paul Chan, along with some mainland social media personalities, visited the Hong Kong Brands and Products Expo at Victoria Park. He said he wishes more mainland residents will have the opportunity to learn more about products which are made in Hong Kong. Timothy Lee, TVB News. With just two days until Christmas, temperatures in the city remain chilly. The observatory has issued a frost warning while the cold weather warning remains in effect. Several areas experienced occasional showers this morning, with the observatory reporting a record low temperature of just 8.1 degrees Celsius earlier today. That's the lowest temperature recorded since the start of winter. Timothy Lee tells us more. The weather in Hong Kong became even more chilly today, as residents faced a combination of cold temperatures and occasional showers. This as some residents braved the wind to exercise at the central harbor front. Okay. This woman said the weather was acceptable and that she was used to the cold by now. While this woman said she was glad the winds weren't too strong, but her home at Hong Fa Chun experienced heavy rainfall. This morning, urban areas recorded temperatures as low as 6 degrees Celsius. Tai Shan, which stands 957 meters tall, once again saw temperatures drop below freezing point to minus 0.6 degrees. This as state's cairn recorded temperatures as low as 1.6 degrees. Despite the weather conditions, many people were still eager to board the Ngong Ping 360 cable car on Lantau Island. MTR staff at Tongcheng Station were seen handing out heat packs to those heading up to Ngong Ping, which reported temperatures as low as 2 degrees. This Malaysian tourist said he did not expect the weather would be this cold, adding he is already wearing three layers of clothing. The observatory issued a special notice for motorists and pedestrians to be careful of slippery ground in elevated areas owing to possible ice formations. Residents are reminded to avoid staying on high ground and open areas for extended periods of time. The chilly weather is forecast to continue throughout the Christmas holidays, with temperatures gradually rising to about 17 degrees sometime around the middle of next week. Timothy Lee, TV News. 
MTR has rolled out contactless bank card payment for train rides. Starting today, passengers could tap into MTR stations with their Visa contactless credit or debit cards. While the service is not available yet for Airport Express, Light Rail and MTR buses, some travelers found the new payment method convenient. Since being from India, I always used to have the habit of uh, carrying cash uh, as a tool for you know currency but uh, out here in Hong Kong absolutely no need so I switched my wallet from a uh, cash wallet to a card wallet now. Okay. So you're the, first one. the Visa bank cards or other payment enabled devices could be read at these light blue gates. The fares would be the same as adult octopus charges but MTR fare concessions and the government's public transport fare subsidy scheme are not applicable when using the bank cards to take the train rides. Bank card commuters won't be able to enjoy interchange discounts as well. Currently, the service is limited to Visa card users. The rail giant said more credit card providers will join the scheme in the third quarter next year. Twelve defendants involved in the Pali U siege during the 2019 social unrest were sentenced to up to 56 months and three weeks in prison. Aged between 22 and 30, the defendants include a student, tech company worker, research assistant and elevator technician. They pleaded guilty to the charge of having participated in rioting on 17th and 18th November 2019 around Chatham Road South and Cheng Wan Road. Around 2,800 pigs at a farm in Yunlong will be culled next week after testing positive for the African swine fever virus. This marks the third such case in three months. The farm is located at Lao Fao Shan. The Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department tested 60 pigs at the farm on Friday, and at least four of them tested positive. Officials then inspected two other pig farms nearby and collected samples for testing. These two farms have been temporarily stopped from selling the pigs. There's another twist related to the legal battles facing former U.S. President Donald Trump. The Supreme Court said Friday it will not immediately take up a plea by special counsel Jack Smith to rule on whether Trump can be prosecuted for his actions to overturn the 2020 election results. Supreme Court handing Donald Trump the practical victory he wanted, punting for now on a legal issue that could make or break the federal case that accuses him of plotting to overturn the last election. The high court declining the special counsel's request to answer right now whether Mr. Trump is immune from prosecution. A lower court concluding the presidency doesn't confer a lifelong get-out-of-jail-free pass, a decision Mr. Trump had appealed, arguing complete immunity for anything that happened while he was in office. That led prosecutors to ask the Supreme Court to step in and quickly resolve the issue now. Today's decision all but guaranteeing the existing trial date set for March will slip. All this as the prosecution's hand is strengthened on a different front. The Detroit News reporting it reviewed audio recordings of Mr. Trump pressing two local Republican officials not to certify the 2020 election results in Wayne County, Michigan, telling them we can't let these people take our country away from us. He thanked me for my service, asked me how I was doing. NBC News has not heard or verified the audio. The Trump campaign maintains the former president was focused on election integrity. The call itself only described benignly by one of those local officials at the time. Are you saying the president's call had no influence on you recanting your vote? Absolutely. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said that COVID subvariant JN.1 accounts for 39 to 50 percent of cases in the United States as of December 23rd. This, as a, this is an increase from the estimated 15 percent to 29 percent of cases in the United States. The CDC had projected as of December 8th. The CDC said the variant continues to cause an increasing share of infections and is now the most widely circulating variant in the country. It added the continued growth suggests the variant is either more transmissible or better at evading immune systems than other circulating variants. The CDC said it is too early to know whether or not what extent GD, GN.1 will cause an increase in infections or hospitalizations, but that existing vaccines, tests and treatments still work well against it. 
On Tuesday, the World Health Organization classified JM.1 as a variant of interest and said current evidence shows risk to public health was low from the strain. Still ahead? UN Security Council approves watered-down resolution on Gaza. United Nations declares the Spring Festival a food and holiday. Welcome back. The United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution calling for the immediate speeding up of aid deliveries to civilians in Gaza as the Israel-Hamas conflict rages on. Danny Rao tells us more. The long-delayed vote result in the 15-member UN Security Council was 13 to 0, with the United States and Russia abstaining. The U.S. abstention avoided a third American veto of a Gaza resolution following Hamas's surprise October 7th attacks inside Israel. The watered-down resolution called for an immediate speeding up of aid deliveries to hungry and desperate civilians in Gaza. The original plea called for an urgent suspension of hostilities between Israel and Hamas. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, thanked the US for its support and sharply criticized the UN for its failure to condemn Hamas's October 7th attacks. Hamas said in a statement that the UN resolution should have demanded an immediate halt to Israel's offensive, and it blamed the United States for pushing to empty the resolution of its essence before Friday's Security Council vote. Speaking after the vote, Dai Bing, the chargé d'affaires of China's permanent mission to the United Nations, said owing to reasons known to all, the draft resolution made a lot of adjustments in some important aspects, which are not consistent with the direction of our efforts and fall short of our expectations. He added, given the current pressing situation and ever-escalating humanitarian catastrophe in the Gaza Strip, this action taken by the Security Council at least brings a glimmer of hope for more and faster delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, meanwhile, reiterated his long-standing call for a humanitarian ceasefire while claiming the way Israel has carried out its offensive against Hamas has created massive obstacles to humanitarian deliveries in Gaza. A humanitarian ceasefire is the only way to begin to meet the desperate needs of people in Gaza and end their ongoing nightmare. I hope that today's Security Council resolution may help that finally to happen. But much more is needed immediately. The real problem is that the way Israel is conducting this offensive is creating massive obstacles to the distribution of humanitarian aid inside Gaza. An effective aid operation in Gaza requires security, staff who can work in safety, logistical capacity and the resumption of commercial activity. These four elements do not exist. Israel has resisted international pressure to scale back its offensive. The country's military has said months of fighting lie ahead in southern Gaza, an area packed with the vast majority of the enclave's 2.3 million people. Daniel TV News. The Spring Festival has been officially listed as the United Nations floating holiday in the UN calendar of conferences and meetings starting from 2024. A floating holiday is one that UN staff members are given the option of observing in the interest of respecting their diversity. In addition to important statutory holidays of the host country, the United Nations can adopt a resolution through the General Assembly to designate festivals widely celebrated around the world as floating holidays. It will try to avoid arranging meetings and activities on that day. The Spring Festival is a legal holiday in many countries and regions, celebrated by about one-fifth of the world's population in various forms. Sticking to the subject of holidays, the U.S. holiday travel season is in full swing. This time, there seems to be favorable weather conditions and fewer flight cancellations. More from NBC News. On this massive travel day, it's all about volume. Planes and passengers with airlines and control towers yet again managing near record numbers. 2.6 million through TSA checkpoints Thursday, more expected today, with long but mostly fast-moving lines. So far, it's, it's nice because I'm here early. 
and so uh, no problem. Just for some 30 to 45 minute delays. The National FAA Command Center watching every flight, tower, and weather report. As soon as something happens in the airspace system, we react immediately. The good news, good flying weather across most of the country. The Flight Aware Misery Map today highlighted big delays in red, including Miami, Denver, Phoenix, San Francisco, LA, Houston, and Dallas. The DFW Ops Center monitoring five terminals, seven runways, and 80,000 bags a day. DFW is the second busiest airport in the country and the world behind Atlanta. 1,600 flights a day, a quarter million passengers every day after hitting a new record last summer. So when something goes wrong in the Northeast, we feel it here. When something goes wrong here, they feel it on the West Coast. Today, it's also all about the volume on the nation's roads, with 104 million people driving over the holiday on mostly dry roads today. It's about five hours, um, so I get a lot of coffee. I try to only stop once during the drive. Um, it's not too bad. The heaviest traffic expected on Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Back locally, the Civic Party, once a prominent pro-democracy group, is entering its final stages of winding up. In around three months, the Civic Party will officially wind up as its liquidators convene the final meeting today to present the party's liquidation report. The party's interim committee will tender an official mass resignation on Sunday. December 2022 marked the beginning of the end of the once influential pro-democracy political party, the Civic Party. This as the party failed to form its new executive committee after receiving no nominations by the deadline. On May 27th, Civic Party members voted to disband the group during a special meeting through voluntary liquidation. Marking the latest move towards the party's official dissolution, former chairman of the Civic Party, Alan Neo, wrote on his social media page that, Liquidators convened the final meeting to present the liquidation report to party members in accordance with the Hong Kong company's ordinance. The remaining balance of around $97,500 from the Civic Party Limited will be fully donated to the community chess of Hong Kong. Leong said the liquidators will submit a declaration on Saturday's meeting to the registrar of companies within one week. Once received, the registrar will proceed with the registration. After three months, the Civic Party will be officially dissolved. The Civic Party Executive Committee members will resign en masse on Sunday. Civic Party co-founder Ronnie Tong, who quit the party in 2015, shared his feelings about the development. I cannot help but have a strong sense of failure. Uh, I say that because uh, it was uh, at my home at uh, this very season uh, that uh, I reached agreement with other uh, leaders uh, of Civic Party to form a political party which is to seek political reform within the framework of one country, two systems. At the end of the day, the Civic Party became a party which is at odds with uh, the national uh, political system. He hopes a new crop of professionals could step up to take the place of the Civic Party while towing the constitutional and national security line. Founded in 2006, the Civic Party was formed by members mainly from the legal and professional sectors. Its former incarnation was the Basic Law Article 45 Concern Group. In 2007, Alan Young represented the party to contest in the chief executive election. The Civic Party participated in the Occupy Central movement in 2014 while offering legal assistance to those arrested. In the next few years, various key members resigned from the party. But the party also secured six seats at the Legislative Council. In the 2019 social unrest, party members were seen at different protest sites. Violence may sometime be the solution to a problem. In 2020, four members were disqualified from LegCo, including Elvin Young, Dennis Kwok and Kwok Kaki. After that, the party saw a further exodus of members. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.